Hi and welcome back to the Girl Gone London channel. If you're new here, my name is Kaylin. I'm a dual UK and American citizen and today we're comparing UK and US currency. And before you click off because you're like, boring, the UK uses pounds, the US uses dollars, who cares? Just know that this is a Girl Gone London deep dive video, so we're going all out. Also, a fun fact about me, you guys, in the sixth grade, we had to do a speech on any topic we wanted. And the little American capitalist in me decided to do mine about money. Literally just money. I think it was probably about like how money is made. Um, but it makes me laugh in hindsight to think of this 12 year old who is like, you know what I should research? Puppies? No. My favorite author of whatever chapter books I was reading? No. Let's talk money. Anyway, obviously to start, we do need to do a very brief run through of the different denominations in each country, but we're not going to dwell on it. So keep up. In the UK, we have coins and notes. In the US, we call notes bills. Uh, they work out to pounds and pence in the UK. So for coins, there's the 5p or 5 pence, 10p, 20p, 50p, 1 pound, and 2 pounds. There have also been some commemoration pounds, like a 20 pound coin and 50 pound coin. But what we're talking about here is what is widely used in circulation, not what has ever existed. Now for the notes in the UK, we have a 5 pound note, a 10 pound note, a 20 pound note, a 50 pound note, and occasionally an 100 pound note, but the 100 pound note is only issued by Scottish and Northern Irish banks, uh, which we'll get to in a little bit. In the US, we have coins and bills, which are dollars and cents. For coins, there's one cent, the penny. There's five cents, the nickel, 10 cents, the dime, 25 cents, which is a quarter. And there's also a half dollar, which is 50 cents, and a dollar coin in limited circulation. These are novelties, so I'm just mentioning them. You likely will not see these on your trip to America. When it comes to bills, we have $1, one dollars, one dollar, that's why it's one, five dollars, ten dollars, twenty dollars, fifty dollars, and a hundred dollars, all in wide circulation, with a two dollar bill existing in limited circulation. Again, it's one of these things that you're not going to be given as change at a store, but your American grandma probably has one she likes to give out for Christmas for fun. Um, but it's very clear from putting these up on the screen that the currencies in the UK and the US have visual differences, but let's try and break down the differences in more detail to see if we can learn more about each country in terms of how they choose to design, print, and handle their money. And while I'm talking tangent, I did not include this in my head for what's upcoming in the video, but side note, there are also different um, slang terms for money in the UK and US. Obviously each like individual note might have something like a 10 pound note can be called like a tenor um, in the UK. But in the US, we would say like bucks as uh, 10 bucks or 20 bucks um, instead of saying dollars. And in the UK, they would say quid. So 20 quid, 10 quid. And that's just their slang term for saying uh, instead of saying pounds, they say quid. So. Tangent over, let's keep going. Okay, the official difference number one is the size of the coins. So the size of the coins is a bit different in some aspects, um, but as a fun fact, the 5p from the UK and 10 cents from the US are very similarly sized, as well as the 10p from the UK um, being about the same size as an American quarter, and the one pence and one penny are basically the same size. American coins don't have the fun edges that we see in the UK's 50 pence, which is my personal favorite coin if I had to choose one because it's so easy to pick out of your wallet. In terms of notes or bills though, British banknotes are actually a couple of centimeters wider or taller than American bills. And this means that wallets in each country are made to be different sizes to accommodate. So if you need a new wallet and you're traveling in a different country, make sure their money is the same size as yours because people have purchased wallets in America, brought them back to the UK and realized this does not fit my money. The other thing to note is that, hmm, get it? British notes are different sizes to each other. This helps for accessibility reasons, so those with visual impairment can count their money more easily. American bills are all the exact same size, so you cannot count it just by feeling it. There's no particular reason why this is. Some people suggest it's down to the aesthetics of uniform sizing being easier to stack altogether um, or to fit seamlessly into your wallet. 
Others suggest it's down to the US wanting a one size fits all printing process for money, where the blank sheets can all be the same size and you just need one type of machine programmed one way to make the right size of cuts. It's definitely a departure from a lot of other currencies though, including Australian money and the Euro, which are all different sizes to each other, like the British banknotes. Difference two is the color. U.S. bills, while they have gotten some more splashes of color in recent years, are predominantly green, and in fact they are popularly called greenbacks due to this. When searching for a reason, again, I found that according to the Bureau of Engraving and Printing, you know, the, the top dogs themselves, the most authoritative resource I could find, there isn't one explanation for this choice, but when these bills were first introduced, green ink was available in large quantities. So they were like, yes, readily available. Let's go for it. Green was also possibly considered a good color to stop counterfeiting, and it was psychologically able to be identified with a uh, strength, a strong government, a strong currency, and an overall strong color. In the UK, current banknotes are very different in color. Predominantly green for the five, copper for the 10, purple for the 20, and red for the 50. Again, this is more in line with what some other countries do um, with different colors for their currency to make things easier to identify. Uh, so really, honestly, what it comes down to is I guess they were willing to go out and find other colors of ink rather than just relying on what was in the back closet at the time. Difference number three has to do with the history of putting monarchs on money. In the UK, there is a history of putting the image of monarchs on money, which started with coinage. It wasn't until 1960 that Queen Elizabeth actually was the first monarch to appear on banknotes, but royal images on coins go way back. In the US, the newly formed government was initially against having portraits of leaders on their currency, as this was seen as a very European thing to do, and the colonists wanted nothing to do with that. So they used faces from Greek and Roman mythology, as well as Native Americans, um, and they did not convert to using images of historic Americans until much later on. Still, US currency does not feature living presidents or relate to any president in office at the time. In fact, no one living is allowed on the currency. This tradition was cemented in law in an 1866 Act of Congress, so while there are historic American presidents and figures on currency, like Andrew Jackson, Benjamin Franklin, and Abraham Lincoln, this can only happen later on once they are dead. This is clearly not the case in the UK, who use living monarchs on much of their currency. Before we move on to the next difference, I just want to insert a shameless plug here, not for a company, but for myself, as I have another channel that's newly started, All American Atlas, where I do deep dives into America-specific content, so just without the UK comparison. So if you're interested in similar content with an American focus rather than UK or comparison videos, make sure to check that out. I'll link it in the description below. Now the next thing to note is that the US did actually use pounds at one point. When the English colonists first arrived in America, obviously they continued to use the monetary units used in Britain at the time, including the pound, shilling, and pence. But soon the situation became a bit more complex and Britain was like, why are we sending you our silver coins when actually we want you to provide us with precious metals from this new land? And the colonists had to turn to other commodities to use as money, including Spanish coins and other items to barter. For example, from 1643 to 1660, a certain type of shell used by local Native Americans were legal tender in Massachusetts. It ended as you might guess, because Mother England put a stop to it. The Spanish dollar was actually legal tender in the United States until 1857, and even after the US started creating their own coins, Spanish pesos were more abundant than locally made dollars and cents. After the American Revolution, the colonies no longer had to worry about what Britain wanted it to do, and began issuing paper money and creating their own standards. Again, the history of American currency is a whole topic we could do a deep dive on, and I probably will on my All American Atlas channel, but my point right now is that the US did actually use pounds at one point in the very beginning before things changed in the colonies. Difference number five has to do with a regional element to money. So another difference is that the UK has this bit of a regional element because it is made up of different countries, unlike the United States. There's the Bank of England who issue the UK's banknotes, and this money is able to be used anywhere within the UK. 
But then you have Scottish and Northern Irish banknotes. These are also available in the UK and while regulated by the Bank of England, they are issued by three banks in Scotland and three banks in Northern Ireland, and they have different designs to the English banknotes. Here are what the Scottish ones look like, and here are what the Northern Irish ones look like. Within Scotland and Northern Ireland, using their respective notes as well as Bank of England notes is absolutely fine and accepted. But when you travel outside of these countries with these notes, for instance, maybe you're trying to use Scottish notes in England, you might find that some shops will not take them. These are real currencies. They are not monopoly money. They are authorized to issue these notes by the Bank of England, but you should never rely on Scottish or Northern Irish notes being accepted in the UK outside of their country of issue. Just because they are legal currency does not mean that a shop has to accept them. A shop could only accept payment in something like trading cards if they really wanted. Some will turn down these notes, which they are allowed to do, maybe because they're unfamiliar with them and unable to tell how you can spot a forgery, um, or they'll find it difficult to essentially pay their own bills or their own fees with this money because they'll have trouble getting other people to take them. This is quite a confusing issue, and the information I've just spoken about is from the official Bank of England website, in case you're wondering where I got this from, as there seems to be various myths across the UK as to who has to accept what and if shops have to take Northern Irish or Scottish notes. In the US, every state uses the exact same currency because it's all one country, so there's no regional differences from the money you'd find in Alaska to the money that you would find in Florida. Difference number six has to do with the one pound note or one dollar bill. So uh, the bill or note denomination for the one pound or one dollar is in the US, it's a dollar bill and there is a dollar coin, but it's not widely circulated. In the UK, it's a pound coin, but not a pound note. That being said, many people watching this video will remember the pound note as it was only withdrawn from circulation and replaced with the coin in 1988. It has a long history, printed for the first time in 1797 and continued in print until 1984. The note was replaced with the coin as inflation meant that notes average lifespan was only about nine months and many retail groups preferred coins to bank notes anyway. However, the Bank of England will exchange old one pound notes for their face value in coins for the rest of eternity. At least that's what they say. Maybe they'll change it. But for now, there's no plans to stop. So if you're going through your bags from 1980, maybe an old suitcase, and you find a one pound note, you can still exchange it and keep that money. Difference number seven between UK and US currency has to do with what the coins are made of. When it comes to coins, there's a fantastic chart talking about each of the country's coins and what they're made out of. I'll put them both up on the screen now. The UK one is a little bit old as it doesn't take into account the new pound coin, which is similar to the two pound coin on this chart, but I will leave them up for a little bit so you can continue having a look. Interestingly, the US coins are still predominantly copper, except for the penny, which is zinc. While the UK does use a lot of copper, but has also moved over to using mild steel alloys for some coins and some nickel for the inner rings of the pound coins. When it comes to bills or banknotes, the US is a blend. It feels like a paper, but it technically isn't. It's 25% linen and 75% cotton with some random fibers woven throughout to make imitation more difficult. In the UK, banknotes are made from a polymer, which is a thin plastic, which makes it much more difficult to counterfeit and actually feels a lot smoother and way harder to tear or rip than American money. Another fun fact is that if you get your uh, British pound notes wet for some reason, um, because of the plastic they're made out of, no problem. They'll wipe off, they'll dry just fine. If you get US money wet, um, you know, soaking wet, maybe you drop it in a puddle, you're definitely going to be in for um, a bad time. It could rip a lot easier. Um, and so it's just interesting to me how you could basically go swimming with UK money, but you would never do that with US dollar bills. And the final part of this video is who makes the money? 
this is what 12 year old me, I guess, wanted to do my speech on in the sixth grade. In the UK, coins are made by the Royal Mint, headquartered in Wales, while banknotes are issued by the Bank of England. In the US, coins are made by the US Mint, a government agency headquartered in Washington, DC, while bills are produced by the Bureau of Engraving and Printing, another bureau of the US Department of the Treasury. Okay, that takes us to the end of this video. Comment below with your thoughts, feedback, opinions on all things money, and I'll see you next time.